Let's take a look at how jitter buffers work and from there see what makes them adaptive. So we've got here three lines, each one representing what is happening. The sender is the side that is sending the messages, the packets in WebRTC to the other side. As you can see, it is sending it at a given pace. Every 20 milliseconds or so, there is going to be an audio packet going to the other side. The receiver is the one receiving the data it is part of WebRTC itself, and this is where the jitter buffer lies. The receiver receives the actual packets, it needs to process them, and then play them out. That's the third line. So let's see what happens. The sender sends its messages, they go over the network. Some of them might not get there. That would be the dotted line in there, the red line. And then these packets arrive at different in time intervals than what then they were sent. Some of them get at roughly the same time, others a bit sooner or a bit later, and some of them might get reordered. One thing to notice here is the time that it takes between the sender and the receiver. So we send the data, it doesn't get there immediately, there is some network delay in there. That network delay might change from packet to packet, we've seen that, but there's an average to that delay. Let's see what the receiver does with that and how it moves to play these packets out to the user. So the first packet is going to be played. It's going to take a bit of time. We don't play packets immediately as they arrive. The time that we wait between receiving that and playing it is a jitter buffer delay that we have there. So the first packet got played. The second one is received and displayed. The third one is also played roughly at the same time that where they arrived. As you can see, the second was a bit delayed more than the first, so we aligned that when we played it out. Next, we've got a packet that arrived earlier and the packet that arrived later. So we switch them, we reorder them to make sure that they get played at the correct time. Another packet gets played, and now we have a packet that never arrived. This is considered a packet loss and we need to deal with that, usually through packet loss concealment techniques. Next, we've got another packet, but that one again arrived too late. So we have two packets that are moving forward in time and then we receive the packet a bit late. This red packet here was received, but we had to drop it. And we dropped it because it arrived too late for us to be able to process it based on the jitter buffer delay that we have. Okay, so the jitter buffer receives these packets, reorders them, makes sure that packets that arrive too late can be played and then decide when to play them. What makes all this adaptive is the fact that the jitter buffer delay here that we are accepting and how much we're going to wait might change during the session based on what we see on the network. We might see the delay rise or uh, compress throughout that time. We might need to use this jitter buffer delay also to lip sync. If you want to learn more about WebRTC, go to webrtccourse.com and find the course that is suitable for you. Thank you.